So we have a current child who is a sophomore at the Foothills High School, and he happens to be uh, in the marching band. And we had an older child go through the Foothills school system as well, but he's in college now. So the band program um, in Foothills is quite large. In the high school program, there's about 250 kids that participate in band, um, including Color Guard. And um, so it's a large uh, organization, which requires a lot of involvement, and parental involvement and teacher involvement. And so um, we felt like we could participate in that way because we love hearing the music and watching the performances. So we, we try to do as much as we can and, and be involved that way. It's pretty clear that most of the parents are requested to be involved in some way. There's so much that needs to be done. There's so many aspects of the program that require some parental involvement in order for it to be successful. Um, and so we got involved because our son was involved and is enthusiastic about it and obviously we want to be part of that too and um, as far as our participation we've done all kinds of different things uh, everything from some of the medical band stuff to you know moving furniture moving set pieces moving um, you know instruments there's just helping with uniforms. There, there's just there's, more oh, there's involved. There's a lot. There's more involved than most people could ever possibly know. Imagine trying to get 250 teenagers prepared for a performance in a small amount of time, and they perform during the football games. So um, they usually are staying after school. They practice um, directly after school. They're wearing their school clothing. And then at some point they have to eat. So parents are helping to serve meals. And then the kids will go and actually get dressed. So they have a specific you know, band uniform that it, they all have to look the same and um, it entails. Um, Underwear, un gloves, socks, shoes, hats, plumes, gauntlets, we could mm -hmm. go on Shoes, and on, and socks. they all have to be dressed exactly the right way, or the show does not go on. <laughs> or they get yelled at. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And, yeah. and so, and I think it's, there's 250 to 300 teenagers, all of whom are participating in this extremely demanding, both physically and mentally, demanding activity and they're teenagers so they are distracted they have a lot to keep track of in fact it's remarkable what a what a tremendous job the kids do keeping track of all the things they need to keep track of that being said things slip through the cracks and the things that tend to slip through the cracks are the things that they don't need right away all the time like their inhalers and thus the program. But sorry, I, I know. You perfect. I know, I know, <laughs> but you need it. You, that that's fabulous. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. You need that. that. I didn't even think about the gloves. And because mm -hmm. I, I, I love band. I, yeah, and they lose stuff all the time. All the time. So. Do you guys have carry extras? How does that work? Sorry, I'm just having like. Well, oh, they, no, no, um, no. No, they, when those kids get on that bus to go for a performance, or when they walk out, they have everything they need, music, instruments, and the entire uniform, and they have to be ready to go. Or they don't go out there, and that's it. And, and the band parents will be helping to remind them when they're getting on the, on the bus, if they're going to an away performance. Certainly when they're at school, it's, it's a little bit more controlled because they're at their home school, so they, some, you know, they will have extras of, of things, so. Um, before, it's not uh, as critical. So we do have a medical kit that will go to all the performances. And before the sock inhaler program existed, there wouldn't be that um, medication in the kit. There would be other things. Parents have to sign a form to allow their kids to you know, have over-the-counter um, acetaminophen or ibuprofen or some Tums if they have a stomach ache. 
and then there's all the usual kind of first aid things in there. Um, but for something like asthma, where it's a prescription medication available, that didn't exist until the program became available recently. You know, we've had only two years as band parents. So we had one year without the stock inhaler program and we had one year with the stock inhaler program. And until the program was in place, we really didn't have uh, any guidance other than whatever our own experiences might be with asthma, either for ourselves or our own kids, in order to help these people who were participating. Uh, so the first year, um, thankfully, it didn't come up very much. Somehow or other, the second year, with the inhaler program in place, it became very obvious how many kids were having asthma issues. Uh, and it, it gave us a lot of security to know that uh, we had a little training as a result of the program and the equipment to do the right thing when we needed to. And, and I think that was the biggest difference. And I think maybe for Jackie and I, maybe it wasn't quite as big a deal uh, because we do have some medical background, but I think a lot of the parents who participate do not have a medical background and therefore, or they don't have a medical background with pediatrics or with asthma specifically. So this program, I think, is very beneficial for anybody who's going to be around a bunch of kids who may have forgotten their inhalers. It makes us much more um, fully equipped to do the right thing in the situation when it arises. And certainly sometimes kids have a touch of reactive airway disease, but they don't necessarily have a prescription inhaler yet. So band is in the fall. It's still pretty hot here in Tucson. Um, maybe some people don't realize the practices are on the field. So the grass there's a, gra a grass, there's a grass dust component. Everywhere. It's dusty. It could be windy. So all those factors in place and they're exercising. Right? And so all those factors in place could set somebody off. You know, those are triggers for people who do have asthma. And so or reactive airway disease. So potentially there might be some kids who tend to just be worse during cold and flu season or worse with an allergy component and may not really have it be recognized yet. And sometimes as a parent, if your kid hasn't been diagnosed yet, you don't necessarily realize that having um, a rescue inhaler is something that they need. So it might be something that they're you're just realizing it because they're starting a program like this. You have people that have never done it before in, in this capacity. And so it could be something that definitely sets them off. But it's not consistent. The POC, the, the band uniforms, I know, um, like for our son, he's a taller kid, bigger kid. And I know he, you know, he's been in the program now for two years. And so he is, was really excited because he does have a pocket in his uniform, but not all uniforms have pockets. Um, as a parent, our older son um, had uh, asthma as a toddler, which sort of went away. But then when he was in elementary school and starting to play soccer after school, he, I remember the coach came up to me and said, does your son have asthma? Because he's constantly coughing when he's running around. Hmm. And it was something as a parent, you know, I knew he had it as a toddler. I thought he sort of grew out of it. But then again, being exercising on the grass, um, it seemed to, for him in the fall, seemed to trigger his reactive airway disease. And so that's, for us, I know that's when we got him a rescue inhaler because he seemed to need it at that time. I forgot about that, yeah, that's yeah, true. So, so similarly for other kids who are doing these outdoor activities in the fall, um, exercising, running around, being exposed to grass and pollen and dust, you can see how that would be a problem. And certainly, so that's just like a personal experience. And certainly I've seen the kids um, at, at the various um, practices and performances have issues. So it is a lot of peace of mind to know that whether or not they have their inhaler on them or we do have a backup plan in mm -hmm. place that we can provide that medication for them if necessary and hopefully get them under control and potentially prevent them from having to go to the emergency room. I think it has to be really reassuring for the parents too. Um, um, I mean, to send your kid off, they're not sending them to band practice for an hour or two or three. They're sent, 
oh, you're surprised. These kids are being sent off at nine o'clock on a Saturday morning and they don't get home until 10 o'clock or 11 o'clock sometimes on Saturday night. It's the day of a performance is an extraordinary endeavor. It's, I mean, it's a 14 or 15 hour day. So first of all, for the parents who are sending their kid with reactive airways disease off for the day, I'm sure it's very reassuring for them to know that a rescue inhaler is available if their child needs it. Um, as a medical parent, I, I mean, there's lots of bumps and bruises, there's lots of bites, there's lots of cuts and scrapes, there's lots of my back hurts and there's lots of my knee is swelling up and none of that stuff is life-threatening. But asthma is one of those things that affects 10% of the population, is my understanding for kids. And that, that means if we've got 250 kids out there, 25 of them probably have asthma and some of them probably have really severe asthma. And if the kid with the severe asthma is the one who forgets their inhaler that day, it's gonna make for a very bad day for them and for their parents if we don't have some mechanism to treat them properly and, and in a timely manner. So it's gotta make everybody feel better. And I know for a fact, despite the fact that I am more comfortable with some medical things than some people would be, it was very reassuring for me to know exactly what I needed to do when, when this problem would come up. So to have the inhaler, to know where it was, to have the spacer, to have that child spacer in place with their name on it because they'd used it before. The kid is comfortable with it. I've been trained. I'm comfortable with it. Everybody's comfortable. I can't say everybody's happy, but everybody's more comfortable. Um, I've traveled on an overnight trip and then the day trips and then going to band camp um, this summer. So that'll be my first band and camp then we've experience. Been, then of course we've been banned groupies right so we're, we went along on one big spring trip last year where we were sort of peripheral parents but not really the uh the medical people the, not, not the medical people and not right. but but we were there for all the events what was that like well, it was great it was a lot of fun yeah i mean i think um i know last fall there was a performance away where Foothills will happens to be perform. They're the biggest band in Southern Arizona, so they perform last, and so there's all this anticipation and this build up and everything. And then they do their their routine, and right after one of the routines, one of the kids was coughing and um, got more panicky, and she had a history of reactive airway disease, and so you know people were calling for the medical bag and you know, we basically had to run out and she didn't have her inhaler with her so we got the rescue inhaler out and the spacer and were able to give her the you know a treatment right away so um you know and i think again it's not very funny but <laughs> it's more that you know we just have the medication available to us when it's when it's needed most so um uh, listen, this <laughs> is this is what's funny. Oh, this one's for fun for me. Don't worry. <laughs> the ki the kids today come, for better or worse, with the expectation that in a lot of ways they're going to get taken care of if something's wrong. So our medical bag has, as as Jackie referred to, you know, you can get some ibuprofen, you can get some Tylenol, you can get some Tums if you have some stomach upset, and. A lot of what goes on is not really significant medical issues. The kids are not sick. They need a break. They're hot. They're tired. And it's a lot nicer to come over and chat with a couple of nice parents than it is to stay out in the middle of the field where it's really hot and work really hard. And if you can get to sit down for 10 or 15 minutes and you're having a good excuse for it, that's terrific. So realistically when uh, a child comes up and says oh my ankle hurts and i you know i i sprained it and then they go ahead and put the ice on the complete opposite side of the ankle where they should um, you know they're really in okay shape you there's nothing to worry about but there's really nothing funny about when a kid can't breathe and um, 
there's, there's nothing really entertaining about it in any way. It's scary for the kid. It's scary for us. And, um, you know, unless you do something about it right away, it's going to ruin someone's day. And I think that's the real benefit of the program. That's a real problem that has a real answer. And it's pretty simple. And yet, you know, until this program was in place, we didn't have a mechanism to address it. It's great that we do now. And I have a story. I don't know if you'll want to edit this out at some point, but it was... You do. <laughs> <laughs> The first year where I was helping out as a, a medical uh, band mom at one of the long practices, one of the band members while out on the field was stung by a bee. So <laughs> she came up to me and said, I, you know, I was stung by a bee. And I said, okay, well, do you have any kind of, uh, you know, bee sting allergies? And she said, no, I, I have an allergy to nuts or something. And I said, okay, well, have a seat. You know, we'll get you an ice pack. and you probably should call your mom. It's you know not not necessarily this isn't an emergency, but just let your mom know that you're sitting out of practice and you're you, know, you were stung by a bee. So she calls her mother, and she's completely comfortable. You know, just in a little bit of discomfort from the bee sting. But about 20 minutes later, her mother literally is running across the field to get to her daughter because she's in full-on panic mode because she thinks her kid actually had like a significant reaction to the bee sting. But um, she was fine, and what she she was I mean literally yelling yelling at yelling her kid, at her kid <laughs> saying that she was speeding the whole way there, left something cooking on the stove because her kid was stung by a bee. But it was all fine. But so you can see that the you know parental reaction to different um, situations at band camp can vary from being really maybe out of proportion to what the issue is to, <laughs> to, <laughs> because it's, an, it's in just an intense kind of thing. So I think um, until you've lived through it, you just don't really know how you're going to be as a parent. So it could be a bee sting. It could be an asthma attack. It could be that your kid just is having an off day and doesn't feel well. But um, we have these great you know, volunteers and band parents and teachers that are looking out for the children at all times and trying to do the right thing and certainly having this extra layer of, you know, protection with a, <laughs> with a <laughs> sock inhaler program gives me a, a lot of peace of mind as someone who is often feeling responsible for all these kids that, you know, hopefully we'll get through the day just fine and we won't have any issues, but <laughs> Just in case, you know, it, it does feel like it's just a little insurance in, in the medical kit for us, so. Yeah, on the <laughs> other hand, we've had, <laughs> now you've got us going. On the other hand, we've had kids with really serious medical issues, serious emotional issues, <laughs> things that we've been warned about and have to keep our eyes open for, kids who have had recent surgeries and are recovering, kids who have had serious injuries and are in physical therapy for it and they're out there doing their darndest and yet when we think something's really a concern and we call their parents the parents are fine they just have a grip on it they're not concerned they know their kids they know what's wrong with their kids and they're just they're not indifferent they just have a grip. So, uh, you know, we see a full range over the course of our four to eight hour stints <laughs> covering band camp. Every parent parents differently and your reaction to you'll something have, that's you'll have, this is unexpected definitely not is... going to go in there. So I'm like, <laughs> you'll have like four color guard girls come over because one of them is limping because she hurt her ankle and it takes all freaking four of them to get them over to us. It's like, okay, drama-free zone, go, yeah, go away. Yeah. So they come over for breaks. That, who knows? It's, it's, I don't sometimes know. Sometimes it seems that way. Yeah. yeah. Like but they get tired. I heard yeah. you're out there and you said it. I think they're bored is what well, happens. Well, yeah, because you have to do a lot of standing, right? You do a lot of yeah. standing yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. I happen to be a pharmacist. I also happen to work at the Poison Center. Um, I had a kid with asthma. Um, what people might not realize, too, is that these, this you know, uh, rescue medication is very safe. Um, large doses can be given safely, especially if a 
a person is having respiratory distress, um, it's almost like the it's almost like you can't give too much because the worst case scenario is that maybe someone will get a little bit uh, tremulous or feel like their heart is racing, but at the same time, if they're not breathing, um, the outcome for that is obviously much you know, more serious. So um, from a safety standpoint, from a, a availability standpoint, it's, it's almost like the perfect situation because the inhaler, um, again, it, it has, it's multi-dose, we have spacers, so you can basically safely use it between different people without concern for you know, an infection risk. And um, we can easily chart how many puffs somebody has needed. And you can, it works fast, so you can see the benefit right away. So it, it, to me, it's like this perfect situation to have a, a medication like that available. You can keep it at room temperature, you can use it safely between different people. You can see its efficacy right away and um, there's hardly, there's really you know, no downside to it, so. I mean, I, I think. And it's fairly inexpensive. Right, well, and so, you have to think about it from a cost-effectiveness perspective. Right. If you're looking at it from a public health viewpoint, what's more expensive? a couple of inhalers or three inhalers over the course of the season with the associated spacers or any number of ambulance visits. Emergency trips, room visits. Emergency room mm -hmm. visits, admissions, heaven forbid, to the hospital. I mean, this is, it's really a no-brainer. Not to mention that it's just good medicine. It's good care to have people feeling better as soon as possible. I, you know, I, right. can't, I can't imagine. I mean, if this were not being funded, I would like to think that every parent who's got a kid with asthma would be fully on board and excited about it. And I'm sure that a lot of the parents at our school who make contributions to the band for any number of things would be happy to support, you know, and, more, and I don't know more how, medical yeah. equipment if needed. I don't know how this many people are even really, aware of it. This even. is really low cost medical equipment. Mm -hmm. And honestly, the training was so helpful and such mm -hmm. a good thing to have that, uh, and because asthma is such a common problem, it seems to me that a lot more people ought to have training like this so that they can recognize the problem and know what to do if they ever had to do it. Sure. Maybe for a younger child. I mean, look, these kids are 14 to 18 years old. They know how to use their inhaler usually by the time they get to our age, uh, this age group. but. The question is, do they have their inhaler with them? Is it handy? Is it available? Um, but for younger parents, or parents of younger children, I, I think it would be really worthwhile to know a little bit more about this. Because who knows when you're going to be babysitting the kid who has the respiratory problem.